the key platforms I brought up were managing the, the transition in the conduct process itself, which I obviously talked about there. So that that stayed pretty relevant throughout the whole year, and that was pretty much to what I expected. A better, a lot better than my expectations actually is how that went because the administration was actually very committed to making that change happen. Uh, and then the other platforms focused around uh, reducing academic bureaucracy and making uh, it easier for students to get better advising. And uh, and so that was a little bit uh, big picture when we started with the, with the platforms, but then it, it really converted into how do we use uh, this basically idea on campus that we should start to re like to make things more efficient through operational excellence. How do we convert that into a way that'll actually be less than just cost saving? Right? more than just cost savings, but actually improving students' uh, experience on campus. So that was through working on re reforming enrollment and telebears and also on the advising side as well. And so in one example now, we've, we're basically going to be a huge part of this new initiative called the Advising Council, which is basically going to look at best practices across all of advising on campus and bring them together and make basically make advising a completely new, a new and more effective way for students, and in that way also lead to a longer term goal, which is to get students to be able to get to the classes they want and graduate on time, actually, because that's becoming a huger issue for students as well. Uh, the, yeah, the two big issues that I didn't foresee uh, coming up were, uh, while I did foresee, uh, and it has been an issue in the, in the past, has been uh, the police handling your demonstrations and ensuing violence. Uh, I didn't. It, it blew up in a way that we hadn't really seen, and it led to it being a really a huge opportunity for us to get involved in the conversation. Uh, and so that was definitely a thing that took up a lot of our efforts. Uh, and then the other one was basically around uh, uh, online education and around uh, uh, while we were aware of that, starting with last spring uh, when there was a big uh, showcase of what the what this uh, UCLP was planning for uh, online education. Uh, that we really got involved with it, like starting with the uh, end of end of last semester, and then also at the beginning of this semester, uh, when the Daily Cal actually had a pretty big, uh, big article on that front page article, and so we started going forward from there on that too. My first platform was addressing OE because the year I was running as a candidate, oh, op op uh, operational excellence was really at its peak, and all the students were first getting wind of it. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to address it. Uh, see if there were any problems with it, and most importantly, allow for more student opinion in the decisions that are being made, especially for the decisions that affect us directly as students. One way I addressed that was collaborating with Senator Goldstein, who was really involved in OE the year before from his Senate term, uh, who was starting the decal, and so in order to have it institutionalized and carried forward, we this year piloted the decal under the AAVP's office because we can have some programs structured into it like um, Major Madness. Mm -hmm. So we piloted it under our office for the first time, had students come and then learned about it, taught more students why we do it, what's going on, what are the implications, what are the different things that are still up in the air and identified ways we can start participating more and being more engaged and finding answers to things we had questions about that weren't necessarily available. And then after we did all that, the OE process started having the implementation stage. So a lot more implementation committees started forming once the uh, different ideas were proposed and passed within the executive committee. So usually it's some kind of application for the money, so like making Telebears better. And then the executive, different levels of the committees will approve it. And then um, once it's completely approved and they get the allotted money, they can start implementing it and structuring it. And so around last semester is when that started happening, getting those co implementation committees. And so we started plugging in students to those specific committees, whether they are actual voting members or actual implementing members or just assistants or even just like sitting in the committees to get information for us. The second one, this was kind of a fun one that I had when I was a candidate and I was kind of naive. I wanted to have more outdoor study spaces and I thought, well, if we have all this space outside and we just put outlets on the floor, we don't need to build anything and it's so much cheaper. I but I met with Kathy Caution, who is in charge of capital projects on our, ca on our campus. She, she told me that putting outlets on the floor is so much more difficult than just putting them on the floor because we have to... Um, go underneath the ground and figure out all the circuitry and the wiring that I just totally didn't even think of. Um, so it's much more costly than um, I imagined and we just don't have the budget right now to do anything like that considering everything else we're trying to fund. 
So that didn't really work, so I started then focusing on finding a 24-hour study space for students during Dead Week and Finals Week. So this year, I, um, no one was really picking up the project. I met with Kara Stanley, the director of the Student, Le student Learning Center, and then found the exact amount that we needed to get. I was told it was 16000 Met with different units on campus, different vice chancellors. Um, the bookstore contributed a lot of money. Uh, the vice chancellor, Brezar, contributed the most amount of money for us was able to find this year's funding, and then through CACSIF we're trying to find sustainable funding for every year. But it was like pg e staffing, security, janitorial services, because it's like by law, if we're gonna open this at an educational institution, we have to have the minimum requirements of like safety right. and sanitation. So if you look at the Student Learning Center, it's the upstairs and the downstairs, the general study area that you see that students collaborate. Okay. Mm -hmm, is left open for 24 hours during, um, I'm not supposed to call it dead week, it's supposed to be <laughs> our, our, our week and finals week. If I can remember correctly, one of the things I ran on was to increase the student voice in Berkeley. And I specifically ran on this idea of redistricting and getting a student on the city council. It's something that actually the EAVP tried 10 years ago, the last time that redistricting was being considered at the city level. Um, and they got to the point where they submitted a map where they created the supermajority district of students. Um, but then it was unconstitutional because there are two rules in Berkeley. One, you can't draw an incumbent out of his or her district, and two, you have to stay as close as possible to the current 1986 lines that prevented that map from moving forward. Um, we thought that those rules didn't make any sense because um, it's preserving the status quo. In my opinion, it's defeating the purpose of redistricting, which is to keep communities of interest together. So we took it a step further, and that's when we decided to advocate for charter reform. The council agreed to place that on the ballot in November. Uh, the language is currently being drawn up now, and I think the council is going to ultimately vote in July to see um, what it's going to look like officially on the ballot. So the other piece of that was increasing student appointments on city commissions. Um, I'm proud to serve on a city commission. I'm on the Berkeley Commission on Labor. And uh, we actually did a lot of work to get uh, city council members more focused on appointing students. So I've had members who don't even re really represent students reach out to me. Um, to get possible appointments. The cool thing we did, it's really technical, but if you go to the City of Berkeley website, to um, the commission page, it now finally has like one comprehensive list of commission vacancies that's updated regularly, and you can subscribe to an RSS feed so that when there is a vacancy, you can find out about it. So simple things like that to um, really increase student voice at the city level. Another platform I ran on was, of course, you know, mobilizing around uh, tuition increases and uh, protecting the affordability and accessibility of public higher education. I think some of the stuff I talked to you about earlier, we've been doing a lot of work to make sure that happens. Every month I go um, to a different UC campus for the UCSA board meetings, um, and it's really in collaboration with my counterparts at all of the UC campuses where we have these Fund of the UC campaigns, Prop 13 reform, um, all that good work. And what was the other thing? I think I also said I was going to create a system of issue alerts and uh, create a coalition of stu student groups who are involved in political advocacy, social justice, etc. Get them together to have them start collaborating, um, see what they want to work on, and see how the ASUC can help them. So we did create a Cal Action Coalition. Um, it was actually very helpful leading up to November 9th Day of Action and mobilizing students. Since then, we're starting to change the focus um, because we found that meeting every week or every two weeks is difficult because all of these people are spread so thin and so busy. Um, but they're still meeting. We're compiling all of their listservs and creating a system of issue alerts where any student can sign up. Uh, and when an issue comes up at the local, state, or federal level that we think is relevant or important, um, we'll send that out saying the who, what, when, where, why, and how you can get involved. Um, and I think that was pretty much it. Yeah. Um, well, one of my platforms had to do with like, student funding and trying to streamline that. But that, that was probably the one platform that I think we met uh, um, an obstacle with because of the whole re um, transition plan. Do you know about the ASUC and the CSL kind of going through a uh, transition and the kind yeah, of merging? Yeah, well, I know a little bit yeah. about it. Yeah. So, um, I know this year we passed a bill, there was a bill that was passed to kind of um, stop new groups from getting um, reinstated, I believe. Um, I'm not sure about the entire language of the bill, but the reason being the, the motivation for that was our current staff can handle any more, um, any more 
workload in terms of handling new groups and handling their finances and whatnot. So one of my platforms is to actually create a new grant. I wanted to create a new grant and hopefully they'll be able to do this next year after the transition team has worked together um, in order to um, basically help expedite the funding process. But I think, I mean, my motivation was to expedite committee meetings and the funding process and the actual Senate meeting. That was the end goal. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, even though we didn't do it through that grant, we were able to do it in other ways. So the way um, the senators were trained, the way they collaborated with each other and the whole nature of the entire Senate kind of expedited the actual bureaucracy in the, of the meetings as well. So although I didn't, I wasn't able to go through the grant, so my end goal of having a faster and more efficient Senate did pass through. Um, Another one of my platforms is the, the Surge platform, and that's to, you know, secure spaces for next year. And I mean, I think I did a pretty good job of doing accomplishing that. It's kind of straightforward. I was able to secure Hearst Gym, Hearst Gym for the new spaces, as well as um, some other spaces for like the future Senate meetings. And uh, this was this was time intensive in terms of like meeting with architects, meeting meeting with stakeholders, um, having to design th these different spaces, having to identify everyone's needs. Um, and you know it's not an easy project because we're downsizing everyone and so a lot of folks are losing spaces that they are used to having here mm -hmm. um, and you know we can't really make everyone happy when it comes to this but in the end I hope you know the new lower sprawl is going to serve the student body well um, and this will all be worth it in the end um, and I say I'm also involved in search but I'm also involved in the entire lower sprawl project as well uh, Vishali, I and another senator are the three student representatives to the lower sprawl project um, so we have also been involved in conversations in what the new lower spot is going to be. So I was doing that on top of the search planning as well. So my um, three platforms were, one of them was to enhance student life on campus. Um, one was to submit a formal budget report to the chancellor outlining what student priorities are for the budget. Submit a formal budget report. And um, the third was to um, so I don't remember the exact wording of it, but it was basically to give students more agency and ways to get um, more involved in lower sprawl. So like ways to, or not necessarily in lower sprawl, but ways to like like display artwork of students on campus and like really recognize and showcase the talent that our own students have on campus. And so there's a number of ways that I've addressed all three of them, and I think that I've actually accomplished all three. So for student life, um, we did a couple things. So we had um, a concert on the Glade, on the Memorial Glade last semester, which I think was very successful. Um, I believe it was one of the largest concerts we've ever held um, during the school year. So that was really exciting and um, it was one way to make um, the ACC really relevant and to put our resources towards something that can um, that can really be something that a number of students can enjoy in a number of different communities. It wasn't focused on one specific community or one specific um, sector of students. It was really for everyone, and I think that um, a lot of students really enjoyed it and benefited from it. So that was great, and the way in which we've sustained that is because we didn't want it to be a one-time thing, so we've identified um, sources of funding to sort of put towards um, concerts and similar events that um, promote student life and engagement from all sectors of campus. My second platform was the formal budget report, which we are submitting to the Chancellor on May 2nd, so May 2nd or May 3rd. So that's really exciting, and I actually expanded upon that once I got into office because I saw that the Graduate Assembly also does a similar report, and the Committee on Student Fees does a similar report. So um, the Chancellor gets two or three reports from students a year, and sometimes the priorities are a little bit different, and so I worked with leadership in both groups and decided that it'd probably be much stronger for the three of us to come together and do one report that's from the students that outlines um, all the student priorities for the budget, and we will be submitting that to him on May 3rd, so that's really exciting. Oh, May, it's May 3rd. I, sure. May, I believe it's May 3rd, May 2nd or May 3rd, but um, we'll be submitting that to him, and it's very exciting, and I've spoken with him about it, too, and he really values student input, I think, and so we're hoping that this will make a huge impact. And so it's a budget proposal, not for st like not for individual students, a budget proposal for campus, like right. where campus is, what priorities campus is making when they're doing their budget for the year, like which departments are getting a lot of funding, which departments are underfunded, and what students prioritize as like a necessary and vital need for students, and what we think that they should be prioritizing when they're making budgets, because we know that 
um, like with budget cuts and everything else, like the budget continues to get smaller and smaller and tighter and tighter, and we want to make sure that student priorities are injected in um, the making of the budget because we are huge stakeholders, especially since we're paying so much of it. And, um, my last platform was sort of to um, recognize um, a lot of the great talents that we have in, um, on our campus with our students. And so this is sort of future looking, but what we're doing is we have, um, we have budgeted into Lower Spell a number of different things to make sure that in the new Lower Spell Student Union we have a number of ways to display and showcase um, sort of the talents of students. And so we'll have art displays um, all over, and we haven't identified the exact locations yet, but we have a budget for it, and we'll have art displays in Eshelman and in MLK to, um, for some of our talented students, and won't be just so I envision it as not just being like the art department, but like students who, um, any students who have um, artistic ability and are doing these things should be showcased on our campus. And it's really cool. We have a lot of students with incredible talent, and I feel like we don't showcase it enough anywhere. We don't have a venue to do that, and so we want to make Lower Spell that place. And it, I think it's fitting because it's the student union. And then um, uh, we've also we're having a student business like we really support the food cooperative and we're definitely moving that in we founded a home in the new lower spell and we want to see more student businesses be um, in the model for the new student union and we're definitely looking for ways to open that up more to students and um, have it be something that's accessible and real and that can actually be a possibility so that we can have more student businesses and really be engaging students so that this can sort of be a laboratory to experiment with all their talents before they move on and do what they love outside of school. Especially like looking back at the end of the year you can almost say like oh there's like a million more things that I want to do now because if yeah. I had known now what you know, if I had known then what I know now, like, I, there's so many other things that I want to do. So, yeah, I mean, there's been a number of really surprising things that have happened this year, like Occupy, Cal, like the the BCR bake sale, um, like Faircon coming to speak. Um, there's been a number of huge issues, the campus climate issues um, this year that have been really surprising and something that we've had to just take and um, deal with as they come. So it's been really interesting. It's been a great learning experience. Um, it definitely, at the time, like takes up a lot of time when it comes, and so, and it's really unexpected. So I don't think it necessarily took away from um, projects and things that we wanted to do, but it's definitely something that we did have to focus on um, when they came up because there were huge issues, like especially Occupy is really big, and I think will continue to be. Um, a big thing as we move into next year.